intellectual property creation and management for emerging growth technology companies. Patents in Detail, Part 1. This presentation is brought to you by the IP attorneys and professionals at Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers through the Halsey Intellectual Property Technology and Invention Monitor website. Halsey Intellectual Property Lawyers, IP professionals for entrepreneurship's new golden age. This presentation is part of the Technology and Invention Monitor website's Legal and Business Issues and Instructions resource. Intellectual Property Creation and Management for Emerging Growth Technology Companies. Patents in Detail. Let's begin the presentation. We're going to start drilling down a little bit more deeply into the patent process in the next two modules. And I'll talk in this module about the construction of the patent application and the different pieces of what makes up a patent. And then in the next module, I'll give you an illustrative example of what, the, what a patent can look like and the type of protection a patent affords and introduce a claim that will define what the intellectual property is that a patent protects. So moving forward, this next diagram illustrates a simplification of the patent preparation process. If you begin at the upper left-hand corner of the diagram, you begin with the evaluation of the subject matter that, that could be protected by a patent. And from that standpoint, you, once, the, uh, once it's been determined that a patent should be filed or could be filed for an invention, one of the things that you do in the process of preparing the patent application is to identify the basic elements of the invention. What is the invention? What are the limitations that the invention is addressing? What are the functions that the invention provides that overcome those limitations? And how can they be structured? How can the, the, the organization of the explanation of these elements, these features of the invention, be described to benefit a, or to make possible an outline of the subject matter that is the invention? Once you've done this, in the process of preparing an application, the next step, even though what's interesting, the claims of a patent, define the intellectual property that a patent protects, they appear at the end of the patent document. But clearly, the best way to prepare the application, the patent application, is to provide or to focus your efforts initially on the drafting of the claims, because the claims will identify or claim what is new, what is novel, and do so in a way that is descriptive or suggestive of what should be described in both the figures that explain what the invention is and the technical description or specification that's part of the patent application. So once the claims are, are drafted, and this is where there's a, a essentially a mind meld or a communication that goes on between the inventor and the patent agent or attorney, once those that draft set of claims arises or results from their effort, the next step is to prepare drawings that are illustrative of the elements that make up the subject matter of the claims. Most patent applications will require drawings, of course, with chemical inventions and chemical compounds, many of which are relevant to the semiconductor industry. It's not always necessary to provide a drawing that describes the chemical compound. However, the, uh, the description or the atomic explanation or des description of the chemical compounds uh, can be very helpful in showing where the bonds are or what the bonds are between the atomic bonds between the different atoms and molecules uh, that make up the chemical inventions. But as to mechanical inventions, as to software, as to electrical inventions. Uh, it, the drawings are essential to describe and show what is being claimed. 
Once the drawings are prepared, then it's possible to draft the background of the invention. The background is what describes essentially the world prior to the development or the innovation that led to the invention. And then the summary of the invention that having described here essentially what the outline of the subject matter is and how you decide or how you seek to claim it, uh, the summary is a description in layman's language of what the invention is so that upon reading the patent application or the issued patent that derives from the patent application, you can get an idea, a clear idea of what the invention is. After you've gone through the outlining steps of outlining the subject matter, dealing with the claims, having the drawings that are illustrative of what the claims are, and then setting the background for the invention, defining what the summary of the invention is, the key salient aspects of the invention. Then the next step in the process of drafting the application is to provide the description of what the invention is. And we'll talk about the requirements of what this description must meet. And the last step is to step back and provide an abstract. As with most technical papers, there may be an abstract that summarizes what the disclosure or what the invention is so that in a paragraph of, say, 100 words, or, or usually about 100 to 120 words, and the Patent Office recently has become more diligent about imposing a length restriction on the length of the abstract, but the purpose is to provide an understanding to, on the face of the patent, what, of what the invention is. And once you've done that, that's the preparation process. And it's the end of the drafting process, but it's, not the be it's, it's only the beginning of the prosecution process, and we'll be talking about how that proceeds. Before we talk about the, the details of drafting an application any further, I want to make mention of some of the problems associated with the expense in going through that process that I just described, the patent application preparation process. It's an intensive process that is, requires, if you will, communication, writing, involvement of the patent attorney and his or her supporting organization and the inventor and his time and perhaps others associated with the inventor's development efforts. One of the things that can be done to address the expense associated with the preparation of patents, for example, today, uh, depending on the expense of attorney fees, but a patent application itself going through that process, going through this process, may be anywhere between eight to twelve thousand dollars or more to go through that process just based on the expense of attorney time uh, and filing fees associated with that. So as a result of the amendments to the US Patent and Trademark Law in nineteen ninety five that arose through the general agreement on trades and tariffs that became effective on the 8th of July of 1995, a new type of patent application arose within the United States. And as time has progressed in my use of these, these, this provisional patent application, uh, the invention claiming process, the patent prosecution process, I think has become increasingly accessible to startup companies, <clears throat> but it also has provided the, uh, a way of um, making more strategic decisions and drawing that invention identification and claiming process more closely to the development of the innovations. We'll spend a minute talking about that. So this provisional application, uh, it allows the person making this filing to defer filing for as defer the, the, the filing of a regular application for one year, and it also defers the preparation cost, the significant part of the preparation cost, for as much as, as one year. The benefit is that, is that it can provide the ability to make a, a more rapid or more timely filing of the application, and it only requires 
as opposed to having to deal with a lot of the niceties, a lot of the details associated with the filing of a regular patent application to which the entire document must comport with or comply with the federal statute. The entire document must comply with the uh, details of the background and summary and claims and all of the niceties or all the details that I described in this diagram. The provisional patent application need only provide a description, but the description doesn't need to comport with all of the technical details or all of the uh, formal requirements of the detailed description of a regular patent application. The provisional application must provide the, for the enablement of the invention and provide for the best mode. The enablement essentially means that a person having ordinary skill in the art for which the application is filed can read the description made in the provisional filing and make and use the invention upon reading that disclosure and do so without undue experimentation. There's also the requirement that the disclosure made, the enabling disclosure made, be of the best mode of practicing the invention. In other words, the best mode that the inventor knows of at the time that he files the invention, and he files the, the provisional application. If those requirements are satisfied, then you receive a provisional filing date. The benefit that that provides is that the inventor can, can have an earlier filing date because having the process of going through all of these steps can be delayed to a later point in time. This will essentially have to be done for the patent application to process through the Patent and Trademark Office. But this delay, the up to one year delay from your filing date, is a benefit that the provisional application provides. The provisional patent application provides for a reduced expense, usually one to two or more, probably less than five, probably uh, $2,000 is not an unusual amount or less to pay for a provisional application. Working with the attorney to make the provisional filing is something that can be done in a less intrusive way than going through the all of the processes for a regular application. The filing date operates as your international filing date, your priority date for international filing. Another benefit of the provisional filing date has to do with the term of the patent. I've mentioned before that the term of the patent is 20 years from the date of filing your application. Well, that's 20 years from the date of your regular application. It's not 20, that one year grace of the one year period between your filing of your provisional application and your filing of your conversion application is, does not, is not included in that 20 year period of time. And so it gives you essentially 21 years of effectiveness of your filing and it gives you an earlier filing date which can be very beneficial. The filing fee is significantly less than the filing fee for a regular application. For a small entity, for example, the filing fee is $75. For a large entity, $150. The filing fee for a regular application is about five or $600. The filing fee for a, uh, large, for a small entity, for a large entity, it can be $1,000 or more. One strategy that a, part, that a company might pursue to take advantage of the provisional filing is to, as we go through the development process from one milestone to another to another in a product or research and development effort, is to take a minute, take a little bit of time of making the disclosure once a milestone is achieved and file a provisional application. When another milestone is achieved, another provisional application might be filed. When another milestone is achieved, making the disclosure and filing yet another application. And this would go on as the different milestones or technical achievements arise in a development effort, realizing that from the date that you file the provisional application, 
you have to convert within one year in order to maintain your original filing date. Once you take that, within that one year period, you can provide, you can also, you look and look at the provisional applications that you filed, and you can decide from the provisional applications whether one provisional should be split into two regular filings, or perhaps there's the ability to combine two regular, two provisional filings into one regular filing, but you've got the ability within that one year period to understand more strategically how you are going to develop your patent portfolio, how you are going to spend your company's financial resources to further develop your intangible resources or intellectual properties for the purpose ultimately of creating increased value for the company, again leading to improved financial results. But this conversion of applications that can occur within the one year, this one year period of time from your provisional filing to your regular filings uh, can result in significantly improved intelligence and thinking as the company moves forward. Now let me say too that there are problems associated with the provisional filing. And the fact that you don't have to file claims in a provisional filing. Remember, all that you have to file is a